education is the bedrock of any country. A strong, thriving educational system is a must for national development and growth to happen anywhere. Today on our program, Nigeria's policy on education is our focus. The national policy on education in Nigeria was birthed to bring about proper administration, management and implementation of the educational system in the society and to provide guidelines and direction for educational activities. I am Lydia Udijeochi. Thank you for joining us today. <music> The National Policy on Education in Nigeria is a blueprint on government goals, regulations, anticipations, expectations, requirements and standards to ensure quality delivery of education in Nigeria. Over the years, Nigeria has evolved alongside challenges or changes in reforms in the educational sector due to technological advancement. Now, making education a top priority is a vital part of the current national policy on education in Nigeria. The greater instrument of change Nigerians so look forward to is seeing education improve. Now, how can we as Nigerians ensure fundamental change in our society and improve intellectual outlook of our society. How can we harness the undeniable potentials in quality education to better the lot of Nigerians? These are pertinent questions and more that are seeking answers and that is just what we intend to do on today's program. We have a professional waiting to give us answers. Let me welcome Professor Olufemi Mimiko. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. As a professional in this field, looking at the Nigerian education sector, are you happy? What comes to your mind? When you look at the national policy on education, uh, which for want of a better terminology uh, could be referred to as the grand norm of the Nigerian educational system, you cannot be coming with the impression that uh, it's a lot of resourcefulness went into uh, the making of that, of that document, I think the first edition was in 1977, and uh, the current, the latest edition published in 2014. I'm not sure uh, a new one has, uh, been, has, been, has been published. If you look at that, you will see clearly that uh, efforts were made to define uh, the basic philosophy uh, that will drive the nation's educational system. Uh, the document also specifically highlights the goals of the educational system. It's uh, spot on in terms of identifying that education for purpose of national development, uh, predicated upon uh, the development of the human capacity, human mind, uh, the, the, the calibration of the school system into the different levels and layers uh, from the pre uh, basic education through uh, to tertiary education system. All of these are clearly and neatly laid out. Uh, you can ever give kudos to the, uh, those who, who search to put that together. Uh, but one point it says that the road to, to hell is paved in good intentions. It's one thing to have good intentions, it's another to be able to deliver on them. Uh, looking at the Nigerian education system these past years, yes, we've made some progress in terms of uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, expanding the, 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 the framework for training the minds of Nigerians in terms of developing uh, the manpower for the national economy and what have you. Uh, but in practical terms, uh, when you just suppose the national policy of education uh, with what we have on ground, you cannot be come away with the impression that uh, the educational system of this country can still admit of more attention. Uh, let me give you some specifics. Uh, for instance, the national policy of education advertises universal education. 
uh, that is, uh, uh, our children must go to school in the first 12 years of their, of, of their age. And that basic education should be compulsory and free, available to all Nigerian children. But that is not what you have. Uh, 63 years on, we still have not been able to deliver on that very, very uh, uh, impressive vision that we had. Uh, as we speak, we have uh, about 20 million Nigerian kids of school going age still roaming around the streets under one guise or the other, some cultural, religious, economic, what have you. Uh, that's a national embarrassment. The fact that we have not been able to get all of these kids into school, uh, and we don't seem to care, is, is, is quite worrisome. I recall that I was privileged to attend um, uh, uh, this the public sitting of uh, one of the committees uh, of Senate uh, late last year also, and the president of the Senate was there, and he actually made reference to this, that if the figures were properly tallied, uh, he was sure that we would have in excess of 20 million kids roaming the streets. I did my check, one of the uh, studies I conducted, and discovered the number of children roaming the streets in Nigeria. That population is higher than the population of 89 countries. Uh, and so we have not been able to deliver on that promise of universal education to our kids. Uh, look at the relationship between what we produce and what the industry requires. There's still a skill gap that is there. We have not been able to close this. We have not been able to provide access to every person that desires to go, for instance, into tertiary institutions. Every year, JAMP uh, administers, I mean, uh, uh, exams to more than 2 million people, but we're just able to take about a quarter of them into the university system. And so on fundamental grounds, you, 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 you agree with me, that we still have a long way to go. But that is not to say that we have not made some efforts, uh, but a discussion of this nature is not actually about what efforts we have made, rather about how we remedy the deficiencies in the system. Okay, now, from what you have uh, deduced so far, we would like you to still tell us what those uh, key factors are, those factors responsible for the decline <clears throat> in the infrastructure and somewhat weak management structures that have led to the brain drain in recent times? The phenomenon of the brain drain, uh, what is now referred to as the Japa syndrome, uh, uh, is consequent upon uh, the, 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 the poor, uh, poor action in, in education. But that is not the only reason. Of course, you know that uh, uh, productive economic opportunities are shrinking uh, for the youth of the country. And this is a very, very critical demographic that is not going to sit back and just wait for time to pass so they, they, they decide to, to put dialogue, as Shrinka will say, with their feet, uh, for searching for better opportunities all over. But in terms of what is responsible for the challenges we have in the educational system, I first make the point about political prioritization, uh, political will, if you like. Uh, when this Nigerian state uh, and its principal agency government, when they are not committed to education in the manner that you expect, this is the type of thing you see. And I have done quite uh, some study of countries, transition studies and all of that. I've not seen any country in the world that made a very significant transition from poverty to prosperity, from instability to stability, from uh, uh, lack of progress to progress without prioritizing education. And so as long as we keep education at this perfunctory, I mean, with this perfunctory level of commitment that we have demonstrated, we continue to have this problem. And how do you measure that? How do you, what is the significant indicator of that? Is how much we give to education. It's how much we give to education. Apart from perhaps 2007, 2008, under the era government, when we did about 30%, Nigeria has consistently given its education system less than 10% of the federal budget. And this is against the backdrop of the recommendation uh, uh, in 2015 of uh, the, uh, the Education for All initiatives that 15 to 20% of national budgets will go to education. And so 
prioritization is, 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 is there. Lack of funding, which is, which is attendant upon low prioritization, is also there. There's also the fact of the inappropriate management of the resources that we have in the educational system. You argue that we don't have enough, but the little we have, are we managing appropriately? And my answer, without any, any hesitation, is that we're not. Uh, if we have time, we go into the details of that. But certainly these are the factors responsible for the poor infrastructural presentation that you have in the school system in Nigeria. I mean, go to a, the average primary school, the public primary school in any part of the country. And you marvel at what structures we put, what, what contractor we have there. And you begin to wonder how we expect to grow kids that will robust, robust commitment to, to the national ethos in such facilities. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot to do, no question about that. Okay, now looking at the national policy on education in Nigeria, would you align with a reform or an upward review of that policy? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, we can't overemphasize the point that we need to do that. Uh, as, I met, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, the document was uh, first packaged in 1977, and then the uh, latest review was in 2014, published in 2014. I'm not sure any other one has been uh, published after that. And so you, 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 a lot of water, as they say, uh, has passed uh, under the bridge between 2014 and now. Uh, there's compelling reasons why we need to take a second look at, at, at that document and the issues I think we must emphasize now uh, uh, is number one, how to ensure that we get these, these hordes of, of, of kids off the streets and into the school system. It doesn't have to be the former school system that you and I went through. It could be one that is married to some form of vocational training and all of that. But it's a national emergency that we must, we must uh, track in the new national policy on education. We must also talk about what the need for us to imbue the educational system, especially at the tertiary level, uh, with, 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 with lessons in critical thinking. We must try to develop basic life skills for our kids. We must, we must emphasize the place of technology. Uh, it, it was an embarrassment, for instance, that a couple of years ago when uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, came up, that the public universities in Nigeria practically shut down because they could not cope uh, with the idea of interacting with their kids uh, online. And so these are things we must emphasize. It's also important for me that we mainstream the triple helix model that is a deliberate effort to make a link between government, the research institutes and universities and industry. Some countries have perfected this model, i.e. China. And it's not a surprise, uh, the turbocharged economy that, that, that such countries have posted these past few decades. And so we must put all of this together in the new national policy on education so that we have the appropriate focus, make our education current, make it serve the purpose of national development and, uh, and uh, what have you. I like the fact that you said that there should be a national emergency on the education sector in Nigeria. Now, would you blame lack of political will on the challenges and problems bedeviling this sector? Absolutely, again, uh, political will is, uh, is, is, is clearly missing. I call it political prioritization. Uh, if you do not prioritize education very well, you're not gonna get the results that you require. And I have made the point that the, 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 the most compelling evidence that we are not prioritizing education is the minuscule amount we give to education. I mean, this year we're doing just about 8% of the federal budget to education. Nobody does that. I recall in the old days of uh, the First Republic, uh, the, the Obafemi Aulo government in the Western region that uh, uh, displaced uh, by reason of the way it managed education was giving more than 40% of national of its resources to education. That is what all countries do. And we need to find a way to address this. It is good that we are in a time of transition now. And we have a different set of folks managing the educational system. I just hope that they'll be able to be persuasive enough 
to convince the, the, the national leadership, the president, about the need for us to throw more funds into education. Education is one investment that you make that you cannot, you cannot, it doesn't go back. And so the issue of prioritization of uh, political will is critical. If you will, I'll give an example. A few years ago, uh, a president attended uh, uh, the, the, the London Summit on Education, where commitments were made to improve funding to education, uh, I think by 25% in this first instance, 50% and then 100% to meet the Education for All initiative. But we came back home and the following year, the budget went down uh, uh, from what it was in the previous year. This is a demonstration, or was a demonstration of weak political commitment. And so we must address this to ensure that we have an educational system that is robust enough and able to deliver on the goal of developing full citizens, full personalities whose capability and potentials are brought out in the, 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 the course of, uh, of, of developing the nation. Look at our prof, we may have a fantastic policy on education on paper. How can we ensure successful, proper implementation and then sustaining? We have a good policy on education on paper. I wouldn't call it fantastic uh, because as I have pointed out, uh, we have some gaps. We need to do a lot of updating of the books. Uh, I know the NUC, for instance, is doing a lot in terms of uh, trying to uh, update uh, uh, the documents uh, uh, in terms of curriculum and all of that. Uh, so we're making efforts, but I don't think we're there yet. Uh, what we need to do, again, is to ensure we put the proper attention and focus on education. We must recognize, it's, it's, a, national, it's a national thing, we must recognize as a nation that there's no future if we don't build education today. And so we must prioritize education in terms of funding and what have you. We must find a way to enhance the quality of governance in the educational system. Let me give you an example. In many countries, I know, for example, uh, in Tanzania, uh, in Malaysia, amongst others, you cannot hold any administrative position in the school system if you don't go through some formal, and I emphasize formal training. Uh, to be a head teacher, you must pass through, you must go through some, some, some training to be the head of a polytechnic, the head of the university. We still don't have that here. We just assume, for instance, that every professor is going to be a fantastic vice chancellor. But it does not go, it does not go, go that way. Yet we have the National Institute for Education and Planning and Administration in Ondo City, in Ondo State, that is supposed to be addressing that. But I'm not sure they are doing it because they are not, they are not, they are not allowed the type of resources that they require to be able to do so. And so we need to find a way to enhance the quality of governance of the educational systems. We need to upgrade the quality of infrastructure. Again, for me, these are issues that call for concerted effort and action on the part of all the tiers of government. And as I said, this is the auspicious time. And so the president should lead this charge and ensure that we put education uh, where it should be if seriously we desire to have national, national development. Okay, now, Prof, I, I would like to hear your advice on this, on this, on this aspect. Now, people who are supposed to implement these policies, how do we hold them accountable? We should be able to hold them accountable. I know that in the days gone by, in the years gone by, uh, the school system, at the basic uh, education, secondary education level, had this very robust, robust uh, monitoring monitoring uh, uh, scheme or framework in place such that teachers got the job done. Uh, everyone that worked in the school system was proud of being there and they did their best to deliver. It was an age in which the children of teachers attended the schools where their parents were teachers. The, the monitoring system is practically gone now. I know that in a few states, in the past few years, efforts were made to rejuvenate that. And so we need to put attention to that. Uh, we need to ensure that we prioritize teacher training. 
our serious country is putting a lot of premium on the training of teachers. In places like Finland, Finland is supposed to be the most uh, advanced in terms of the educational system. You don't go into the school system to teach if you don't have a master's degree. Uh, but what you have here, all manners of characters are pretending to be educators. Uh, it's, it's, it's not too good in the public school system. But when you go to the private school system, especially the ones outside of the major cities, and you see the type of things they do, the type of people they, 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 they sent to do the classrooms to teach, the type of the remuneration package and all of that, you begin to wonder, is this really a serious nation? We must, we must prioritize teacher education. We must ensure that the teachers are happy. In South Korea, uh, the most preferred profession is teaching. That's what you want to do. That's what the average guy wants to do. A time there was in the Nigerian educational system in our universities. Uh, the, the, best, the best graduates at uh, effortlessly brought back into the system as lecturers. Uh, when I was at uh, Kumba as a uh, vice chancellor, we, 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 we had this policy in place. If you made first class, uh, you, or you, 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 you graduate on top of your class, we consider you worthy to be given graduate assistantship. But at a point, these kids are no longer interested because uh, I mean, you understand why the remuneration package actually, as I put it in the Nigerian education system today, disincentivizes. When you look at what teachers are, are paid, uh, you, you, you hardly will expect that they will give their best. And so that also is important. We must also continue the deliberate effort we're making in terms of in, in, in investment in infrastructure. And I reference Tech Fund. Tech Fund has, has, has been doing a fantastic job in this regard. In fact, for me, uh, I, I usually say Tech Fund perhaps is the most important intervention in the educational system since 1960. I stand to be corrected. And I give kudos to ASU, uh, the union to which I belong, even when we don't agree on all issues, uh, for being the one that drove the initiative that uh, produced Tech Fund. But we must emphasize the need for us to ensure that those funds are appropriately spent. And I'm not just talking about putting up structures. We must ensure that these structures endure. Universities are a growing concern, for instance. They don't close shop. And so when you build today, you must expect that such buildings will last for hundreds of years if possible. We must put attention to that. If we do all of this, we'll be able to upgrade the infrastructural uh, provision and level that we currently have in the system. I don't know if we, we could still go back to those good old days of teachers training colleges. What is the state of teachers training colleges? Because I remember in those days, it was such a thing of pride to attend a teachers training college. I think uh, for all practical purposes, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, level of education, I think has been taken out. Uh, if my, my uh, information serves me right, uh, now the minimum requirement to, to teach in the primary school is NCE, uh, which is uh, uh, an upgrade of the old teacher training colleges that you have. Uh, when you look at the curriculum of, of, of teacher education uh, at the level of NCE, uh, you, 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 you cannot but come to the conclusion that uh, it's good enough. It's not inferior to what you have in other climes. I think the challenge we have is in the delivery, in the delivery uh, of, of when you have a classroom or what we pretend to call a classroom of 250 students and uh, you a professor, you're supposed to interact with 250. I mean, it doesn't make sense. When I was at uh, West Point, uh, the United States Military Academy, uh, West Point in New York, uh, when the 13 students registered for a course, that course is split into two mm -hmm. because it is taken as inappropriate for you to have more than 12 students in the, in the particular class. And so you saw me uh, dealing with a student population of the maximum of 12. Now, I mean, compare that with what you have in the average college of education or the average university, where in some classes, what we call classes, you have 250. If it were basically an online program, uh, the distance learning thing should be understandable. But to push a whole lot of such people, 
you, you have the impression that what you're addressing is not a class, but a rally. And so if we continue on that trajectory, we will continue to have problems. So I think we need to resource the, 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 the teacher training institutes and schools very well, and to put the appropriate, appropriate premium on, on their place in the scheme of things. Uh, now, when you see a young man or woman that uh, just comes out of school and is teaching, and you ask if he or she has a job, you are going to have the answer that sounds like, no, I don't have one, but I'm managing somewhere teaching. Uh, when that is the orientation that you have, uh, you're going to have, you're going to have, uh, have problems. Uh, so, again, that is one challenge that the criminal system has. The national policy on education spells out very clearly the relationship between universities, colleges of education, and polytechnics. But we have mismanaged that orientation almost completely. And I would say we equate polytechnic education and university education and all of those, those, those inappropriate manners of posing the critical question. Because each of these levels or layers has its own importance to the national economy. In the United States of America, for instance, most people don't bother to go to college or to universities, what we call universities. They stop at the level of, of the community college system. And when you graduate from the community college, you have hands-on experience and exposure. You go out there on the streets and make money from what you're able to deliver with your hands. But here we give the impression that the technical graduates, university graduates are the same, so focused and all of that. So we miss the point. We need a, a, a a, 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 a structure and a traditional framework led by people who have the courage to spell out these things and push in the appropriate direction if the goals and the vision uh, uh, of our educational system are to be, are to be uh, uh, accomplished. Are you of the opinion that Nigerians pay too much attention on paper qualification rather than the education itself? I think so. I want to agree with that is what we, 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 we have. Uh, but things are changing uh, a little bit and we must acknowledge that. Uh, it's actually the craze for paper that will inform that you have polytechnics that don't have students and you have the universities overflowing with, uh, with uh, kids. Uh, so, 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 as I said, we must resource the College of Education system, the polytechnics appropriately, such that our kids and children will see those platforms as appropriate platforms for education. Because when they go to such institutions and they're appropriately trained, and they come out and discover that they even earn more than people who go to universities, then these, these, these issues, these subjects and controversies over the dichotomy and all of that will go away. And so, in that sense, you could say that we put in a lot of emphasis, too much premium on paper qualification rather than education. Of course, that's why kids, our students do everything to just pass and, pass and just get the certificate and, and get going. But we're having uh, uh, some form of uh, uh, improvement, uh, incremental change, if you will, uh, because now, at least in the private sector, People don't employ any law anymore on the basis of what paper you carry. You call yourself a holder of a first class degree. People want to listen to you, defend what you have. And if you are not able to do so, I mean, nobody says you get the job. And find the job will go to somebody that came out with a third class. They who has the right orientation, the right uh, focus, uh, and such will get the job that a first class degree holder may not get. And so it is good that we're moving in this direction. That is like saying the market is itself sorting out the chaff from the from the witch, which for me I think is, is quite good. Yes, there's more emphasis on vocational training right now. Now, Prof, as we, as, as we round off, every Nigerian looks forward to education made accessible and affordable. Is this feasible looking at the current realities today? It is feasible, but it's quite challenging. Again, I call upon my experience uh, as a former vice chancellor. I remember when I was at Ajikle Ajash University, uh, teaching for our students was a mini school, 25,000 naira. And each year, because every year you go, 
before what they call the budget defense system, where the state's chief executive presides, that's the governor, uh, because it's a state university. And every year I make this commitment, this, this presentation, or, or why we needed to increase tuition. Uh, the governor will tell us uh, that well, I, I don't want any student to drop out of school because of inability to pay. Uh, and so, Mr. Vice Chancellor, Bossa, we're going to give you additional X amount of money to ensure you maintain that, that uh, uh, fee to fees regime you have in place. That's the type of commitment I, I, I spoke about. Uh, but we have this orientation today, uh, which is quite laughable as far as I'm concerned, that you could deliver university education free of charge. For me, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It's an ideological position. I don't know of any uh, climb except the Scandinavian countries where university education, for instance, is completely free. And so for me, uh, that's why I endorse very, very uh, clearly and unequivocally uh, uh, the new act on students' loan. I think it's important that we allow that to work. We can think up with the bill, as I argue in one or two of my writings on it, we could think up with it and make it more, more robust. We could ensure that the management of that, that scheme is placed in the hands of people who are going to deliver, uh, including uh, uh, members of the unions in the school system. And we make it accessible to every student that requires such funding to be able to see himself or herself through school. And when we have that in place, then the schools will be able to charge economic rates and will be able to run uh, as, as appropriate. But for basic secondary education, of course, it must be completely free and universal. We must also emphasize technical and vocational education, which also I believe should be completely free. Uh, we should have the vocational centers all over the place and encourage our kids to go in there to get the requisite uh, training and exposure that will make them able to be able to set up businesses and employ uh, uh, people. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Thank you so much, Professor Oluwa Femi Miko. And we look forward to a, an education sector that is more improved in standards and in all ramifications. Thank you for finding time out of your busy schedule. All right. uh, I wish you uh, the best. Thank you so much. Keep watching, keep watching NIPS Policy TV. To be very honest, I'm not happy. But I know to some extent it's effort to educate us. Well, on a general note, on a scale of the international level, Nigeria is lacking way behind in our educational system. As a parent, it's quite sad what's happening in our nation. Um, my daughter just went back to university from 45,000 to about 160,000. And like I was telling a friend, so what are we saying? If a parent is not wealthy, you can't send your child to school. What we're moving forward for is not what we are seeing in terms of we go to school, after going to school, you end up with all the money you spend. You end up living a frustrated life. Education is the foundation of everything in the world. I want to beg this government. A poor people, they do not have 
access to have their children. I want this government to look into it so that they will help the parents. Our hands are not equal. Education it was the one that made us become today. If not because of education, you cannot be alive. I want to beg this government to help Nigeria, to help everybody. If it's me, even the, from the federal government, to give free education is very important. You know, I heard that this time around from the university, they increased the money of the school fees. You know, but uh, this time around, I want to beg so that they will help uh, a poor people that they don't have anything. Based on the, the course you studied in the school, after studying the school, the, the course, you come back and be a liability to that very course. You don't have empowerment to put that in practice. Looking from the past to the present, our lecturers, the people that taught us, they would tell us that we are, they didn't go through this kind of stress. Education was more free. They were begging them to do it. Then all of a sudden, everything started changing. As I am a student, there are so many effects that I am facing due to the transport and the increase in the price of the school. Whereas before, as you have, from what we realize now, before we are thinking of us who are doing something negative to the nation. But since there is a deduction, or I should say, they remove that tissue, fee, the price of the school is more higher than what we are expecting. Before, if I could remember, the time that there is tissue fee, we normally used to pay as in, let's say 40,000. But due to that, tissue fee, there are some kind of situation where there is, for now, the school, the school, they have increased the money to 95,000. Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching NIPS Policy TV. or the other in the school and they just go and do some things that is not called for or something that they are not meant to do but i pray that god will help us and give us grace and i want to plead that they should please if they can look on us and just bring it down a little again so that everybody can because some people might drop out because the school speed is too much they will drop out of school and they will feel there's no need of going for that because the money you're supposed to use and do other things you're adding to the school fees and you're paying school fees when you pay the school fees, what will you use to eat? What will you use to fare? What will you use to get transport to do? What will you use to get transport to go to school or do other things? I'm just pleading that if they can just help us, look upon us and help us just reduce, even though it's to reduce the money or something. Yes. What we have saw in the olden days is even better than what we are seeing today. And the, the situation we are now, we are suffering. Due to the fuel price, transport, there are so many issues. So what's the way forward? What do you want government to do? I know, I know Nigeria is a blessed country. We have a good leaders for some reason. For some reason, we have a bad leaders. 
due to the situation where we are facing right now is that we are in a situation whereby the poor are becoming more poorer while the rich are becoming more riches. For some reason, there are some issues that we, the poor, have to take it so that we can help each other. For instance, if to say government have deducted the, the fuel price due to some of our drivers, now they will say the price of the car from here to just, let's say they say 3,000. But if government use the opportunity to deduct the price, the drivers, most of them, they won't deduct by themselves. As you can see, we the poor, or we the masses have some kind of issues, while the leaders, they have to work on it so that they should give us a good understanding to ourselves so that we can provide more success. Somebody will be an engineer, but you will not see what he's doing as an engineer. Somebody will be, you know, you understand, but you will not see anything happen. We only live life for money, not to sacrifice. Yes, the, now the issue of sacrifice. I want you to give advice, especially to Nigerian youth. This get rich quick syndrome. Mm. Nobody wants to work hard. Everybody wants to be rich in one day. If, Please advise our Nigerian youth. Okay, a Nigerian youth, I think if somebody will say there is no job, that person must, must have been a thief. Yes, because you can go to the places that they are making uh, pure water, this packaged water. You can get it two, 200 naira and put it in your robe and, sit and take it around. People will buy it, maybe they'll buy it 20 naira, one bag, one letter. Buy it 20 naira, at least you end up life. Somebody finish uh, his academic uh, graduate, he will say there's no job. He will go around living a bad life, stealing Yahoo, uh, Yahoo, but there is job. We need empowerment from our government, though we are the government, but somebody have the, the voice on the government to say so. I studied in the University of Jos, but couldn't go to service because of ASU strike. And when we were in school, most of us console ourselves because maybe your father is retired or one thing or the other. But presently, increasing the tuition fee will not help us because many people are dropping from school. Imagine somebody that cannot afford to even feed himself. How can he sponsor himself? I am an artisan. I use that to sponsor myself while I was in school. I work and I try to provide for myself anything needed in school. But it wasn't easy. And I don't pray for anybody to follow that trend. So please, let the government help us, the youth, so that we survive. Allow the youth to breathe. The fact that most of the people that live located out of Nigeria, they end up going abroad and having to do a lot of courses and courses and courses to be able to meet up with their pets abroad. You know, the, the education system itself needs to be worked on. And then the fact that they've increased the fees something like is alarming you know, it's so much of the parents now you have to think about fuel you have to think about the education system again on its own and there's a lot of things to be done so the government can come in if the government can come in you know and then you know try to see how they can you know reduce the cost of living for the for the for the for the people and then that will enhance a long way for the students to, go to better schools and then even maybe like those of our children are in universities already the university system needs to be checked, needs to be worked on. They have low, low, low quality lecturers right now in the university system, and that needs to be seen, looked into too by the government. So a lot needs to be done. So I think what the government can do for students now is reduce the school fees. It's too high for you. We are students, we are struggling, so the government should just bear with us and reduce the school fees. It's too high. Uh, there's always a strike here and there. I think the government have to make the tuition fee, especially in the high institution, affordable for people who cannot afford it so, so that we have many educated citizens in our country. So the issue of strike here and there, I, I think that has to come to an end.
So I, I don't know if the government will look into that area so that the issue of this ASU strike is no longer recorded in our tertiary institution. Our school fees has increased and our parents cannot pay our school fees. Most of our uncles parked their car because of this um, subsidy. The subsidy is high. So we are pleading for the government to reduce the subsidy so that our parents will pay our school fees. We're appealing to the Nigerian government to review this thing. Education in Nigeria can actually be free, if intended. A delegation of student union government executives, University of Joss, led by the president, Comrade Paul Troy Dakum, paid a courtesy visit on the Director General National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies and his management team. The union leader congratulated the DG on his appointment as DG of the institute. The SUG president seized the opportunity to seek for support in the area of training. NIPS should organize leadership training for students of the University of Jos. This program will not only impart valuable leadership skills, but also instill a sense of responsibility and patriotism in our future leaders. Delighted with the visit, the DG NIPS expressed hope in the future of Nigeria, seeing the courage, commitment, and resilience displayed by the students. We always are happy when the children are demonstrating a sense of responsibilities in trying to understand and trying to contribute to national development. Professor Motayo urged the students to hold on to good values and be of good conduct in all their endeavors. It, my eyes may look the same, but, but certainly they have seen different things. Yes. So I understand why you don't agree with us. Because we, when we are looking at the same mass spirit, to you the mass spirit is short and fat. To us it is tall and thin. Why? Because by natural ways, our analysis have seen different things over time, and certainly what you see is not what I'm seeing. The DG pledged to support the SUG with two slots in the Youth Empowerment Program of the National Institute. Chana Ejoga, reporting for NIPS Policy TV. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching NIPS Policy TV. Director General, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, Professor Ayo Omotayo, and his management team paid a custody visit on the Acting Controller General of the Nigerian Customs, Bashir Adewale Adeni, at the service headquarters. This visit is aimed at finding ways for collaboration between the two agencies and possible ways to sign a memorandum of understanding. We often ourselves as um you build up how much you can build and develop capacity for your men. I've always mentioned something that uh, we have to avoid in building with all we do. And I'm excited that I've had an uh, executive session with the uh, control general and is aware that means has the capacity to further help the young persons to modernize, to continue to modernize, and to continue to situate itself at a, at a location where they can offer the best services to the young people. Those of us who are here cannot do it all by ourselves. We need to train our men to have the capacity to be able to carry out the full functions that the young persons are set up for. And I believe that um, the CG will also look into it and let's uh, uh, have needs our collaboration with you is not going to be a one-off. Uh, it should be something that is enduring. Uh, it should be something that is uh, sustainable because we know how much of value 
uh, interaction with you uh, can bring into our operations uh, and into the administration of, uh, of the customs. A number of issues that you have raised are things that are uh, getting our attention. Just last week, I had a meeting with uh, the DCG Tradoc and the DCG uh, HRD uh, for us to have uh, a roadmap for the remaining months uh, of the year. Of course, we have our regular trainings that are going on on the site. Uh, those ones seem to be on autopilot now because you know, they are already part of our calendar. Uh, we have a number of other trainings uh, which we are exposing ourselves to, uh, including those that members of the management themselves, uh, in batches of twos and threes, they go for uh, these training programs. And uh, if I yield the microphone to some of them now, you start seeing them speaking Queen's English because some of them spent two weeks in UK uh, for some training some, uh, for some training programs. So on the issue of uh, our middle level management programs, uh, ma management officers, which we discussed during your last visit, uh, I'm happy that progress has been made on the curriculum. So uh, the DCG, HR, uh, HRD, and uh, DCG Tradoc will nominate between two to three officers who would sit with your, uh, your team to look at the curriculum, and then they would uh, advise on how soon, and when I say soon, emphasis is, will be on the soon uh, for us to start. Both agencies are on the verge of agreeing on a date for signing an MOU. Chana Ejoga. NIPS Policy TV. Keep watching, keep watching Nick's Policy TV. From our discussion, you can see that education is really very important and cannot be ignored or downplayed. It is the foundation on which a country can attain development, and this is paramount. That's our package this week. Thank you for joining us. I am Lydia Otijochi. See you next time.